everyone. Thanks for making it to this final one. I promise you, since this is the last session, it's not going to be anything um, brain numbing. It'll be pretty fun. We're going to talk about the creative aspect of partnerships and how to get 200 partners in under two years. So effectively two a week. Um, so first, a bit about my company. It's called Alloy. We are like a Zapier for e-commerce. So we essentially integrate with all the different tools that a brand might use and let them not only connect the data across their apps, but automate um, all sorts of actions. And so therefore, because we integrate with all these tools, we need to partner with everybody to do anything. And so um, this is how I got my start in partnerships and connecting um, all the apps. And so today we're gonna go over how we got enough clout and um, social capital to build up this large partnership program. So we'll start with sort of first principles. We'll um, go over some other industries, like other industries and inspiration from those industries. And then also kind of the psychological, reverse psychology like um, perspective on partnerships. And then we'll kind of wrap up with a very quick uh, overview into how you start from day zero in building a partnership program. Um, so can you raise your hands if you've ever built any like formalized partner program with you know rev share, anything like like that? Okay, so pretty much everyone. And actually I wanna um, admit something. I've never done partnerships before this. Um, I actually did not finish college and I've never worked a real job. So I'll be teaching you how I did partnerships. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so a bit of background, I'm also Gen Z. Um, I left high school early and worked at a company um, called Do Not Pay, which is like a lawsuit automation app. So it would not have had many partners because we're effectively getting you refunds on everything. And then um, <laughs> went, to, went to Harvard, did not study partnerships there, um, left after a year, and then worked at Snapchat as an engineer um, intern. I wish as a design intern and then accidentally started this. And so we started with literally like zero perspective on partnerships, launched online on a forum called Product Hunt, and basically like we somehow got partners coming to us to integrate. Um, so this is, I'm gonna go through a series of kind of inspiration and ideas from other industries that basically got me thinking about partnerships in ways that maybe you guys like as um, seasoned partnerships executives might not think of. Um, so actually, let's start with what I call piggybacking. So um, this is an example from Starbucks and Spotify. Um, so basically, Spotify partnered with Starbucks to play, like have playlists and um, have Spotify powering every, like, like all the music in all the Starbucks around the nation. And um, in the tech industry, you kind of see a similar phenomenon, like this happened with um, Apple and Google, where Google Maps is basically piggybacking on Apple devices, or they did until Apple Maps came out. Um, so in our, like in the SaaS industry, we think of that as integrations. So that kind of inspired me a lot in terms of how we think about integration partnerships. You really want to make it so that it feels mutually beneficial and it feels like feature expansion for both parties. And so if you think about all these different examples in like the wild, you can actually um, sort of inspire how you position your partnership program for integrations and also how you're marketing it. The second example, um, forgive my like, Gen Z terminology, but I called this set of examples becoming the plug or like the um, basically providing like all these discounts and benefits for um, through partners for your mutual customers. And so if you have the CSR card, you get Dash Pass, right? And so examples in SaaS would be if you're um, like Brex, they provide this whole portal of discounts if you're on like Brex's bank. We can all do the same, actually, and create these portals and make our customers feel like we know what's up, we can get them what they need. So that's a really good example just from um, even in your high school days, like you had a plug. Um, <laughs> and then this is really random. I don't know if anyone's actually seen this in the wild, but these are the special edition products or special edition seasonal items, whatever that may be. So. You can kind of position your SaaS product or um, whatever the same way and provide them some sort of special edition item if they sign up for a certain tier or um, are like hitting some sort of, in Ramps example, like spend, um, spend limit. So um, obviously this is 
like hardware, like you actually need to make something and maybe examples in SaaS would be like special swag or like special edition um, software portals. Like people actually go crazy about anything they can flex online and be like, hey, I'm like, and you know, I have the metal cart here. So people tweet about this all the time. And then um, this was actually an April Fool's joke. So this set of examples is really called unexpected combinations, duos, trios, whatever. So this was Warby Parker, the glasses company, in Arby's. So really, really random, but you can generate a lot of marketing hype. And so partnerships, at the end of the day, really is about getting people to notice you and want to work with you because they think they can get more exposure through you or you know, just like grow their own social capital. And so actually, a recent example I saw was um, this SaaS company called um, Party Round, which powers like um, basically like crowdfunding. And they partnered with this coffee brand called Cometeer. And so if you sell to merchants, for example, like brands, you could actually do a branded thing, like SaaS company stamp your logo on the brand's like coffee or whatever that product is. And they not only, like, not only do you get a like customer's case study slash like you can feature someone who uses your product, but you can also just generate some hype if they're also a hyped brand. And then this is for when you're like an advanced, like you're at the advanced tier of partnerships, when you can actually partner with some other huge company, right? Like Tiffany and Supreme, they already had their own um, like huge amount of social capital, so they can actually partner together and uh, make a make a blast. So I think the equivalent in SaaS would be like Shopify and Yapo, where they got together recently and that created some buzz. But that's kind of in the later stages. Cool, so a hard truth. Um, my learning actually from the two years of partnerships is that nobody actually cares. And if you drew anything from the past couple slides, it's really people care about hype, people care about money, and so you can just boil it down to two things, which is money and clout. Um, so very easy. Um, and this is where we get into reverse psychology of like how do we make the potential partners think we can make them money and how do we make them think we're popular? So it goes kind of back to just like high school dynamics. Like how do you make your boring SaaS company popular in this SaaS world? So yes, first step, how to convince them to get the bag. So first is creating this like portal that a lot of companies actually have and it actually works because if you make them feel like they're gonna be able to just like show off their services, you can actually get them to at least agree to like work with you and be invested initially and then you can build the supply of um, service providers and then get the customers. So you can do that reverse. Um, so I called that building just exposure channels. It doesn't have to be agencies plus your company. It's all sorts of service providers. The second is feature expansion, right? Like if they realize that by integrating with you, they're expanding the feature set of their platform that naturally helps them with upsells, making more money, et cetera. So obviously with our platform, it's really easy to be like, hey, like we let you integrate with all these other people. So by working with us, you can actually, um, your sales team will be unblocked by a lot of these missing features. And so that's how we got a lot of people to realize like it's really beneficial even if we only have like 20 integrations right now or 30, we likely have something you don't have. Cool, and then clout. Um, so this, this is something we did, which was to make people notice us first. So what I mean by that is we created a lot of these guides, like lots of content that went viral, and we mentioned a lot of people we wanted to partner with who didn't know who we were at the time, but once it got lots of hits, they noticed like our UTM pointing to them, and they're like, oh, who is this, right? And so um, that's how we got people coming inbound, by giving them lots of hits, and then, then them realizing like, oh, this is actually a valuable partner to us. Um, so with this, like we kind of created a comprehensive guide to the e-commerce stack. You can do something similar in your industry or go even more specialized, like you know, work with our company plus these other tools to help your mutual customers like do X, Y, Z. So you can create like that sort of content um, to get people to notice you. And then capturing social proof. So we actually, we often use people's faces because if you see a partner manager you know, like you probably feel like it's safer to partner with this company. And so um, we have lots of pages that kind of point to um, quotes and like things our partners are saying. And then we also stamp, get as many badges as we can to like also show we have um, other people's approval. So that's pretty underrated as just like a um, social proof mechanism. And then finally, once you have a bit of that partner program going and 
um, the social clout, you can actually create a FOMO machine. So obviously Shopify is a large company, but this tweet was really good because they're like, you're missing out on like 200 plus million in earnings, obviously combined across their partners. But you see those numbers and you're like, oh gosh, like if I don't integrate, get on this ecosystem, I'm really missing out. Um, so you can make your partners think you will help them make money. And then last but not least, this um, Webflow is like one of my favorite companies in like the sort of partnership world because they created um, almost this movement around no code. So if there's any way you can kind of do the same and like create a movement, it doesn't, I guess no code was sort of a word before, but it wasn't that popular. Um, you can popularize a word. I guess it's harder than, I'm, like it's easier said than done, but um, that is also a really good tactic to just driving awareness of your partner program. Cool, so um, I'm actually, this next section is really short because basically all you need to do is put up a page, um, outline all the ways you can work together as partners, um, so keep it clear and simple. The second ingredient to creating a partnership program is tracking the basics. So from my uneducated perspective, all I figured we needed to do was just track the referrals, um, the revenue generated, and then the hits, and that's pretty much it. Um, so if you're just getting started or if you want to just go back to the basics and first principles, like just focusing on those key metrics um, from all the other initiatives you're doing and then iterating on that is kind of like my perspective on partnerships. And then um, for us, actually, we try to get buy-in. I think the previous um, speaker mentioned, but getting buy-in from people who aren't in partnerships. So we work a ton with folks in like product and um, CS and obviously you can do tons of different things for them. Like you get someone in BD to just like warm them up and it really helps in getting buy-in for co-marketing and creating all those crazy campaigns I mentioned before because that's not gonna happen purely from partnerships. So yeah, that was pretty much it. A very quick, easy um, way to spur some creative thinking for you guys.